What's the weirdest thing you've seen at someone's house that they thought was completely normal? I had a friend in middle or high school who lived in a country house that smelled like puppy poop. One time I stopped over and there was legit blood splatter on their kitchen walls. No one seemed concerned or eager to clean it up. When I asked about it, my friend's mom just said, Nip, friend's dad, got shot. Never went back. Went over to this kid's house down the street from me when I was young. We ended up watching the cartoon The Proud Family on Disney Channel. His mom comes in and tells us she doesn't want us watching it because there are too many black people in it. He was just like, oh yeah, I forgot. I had an aunt who was so terrified of nudity she made her whole family change clothes alone in a locked bathroom. Even uncle. She also made everyone sleep fully clothed in underpants, old-fashioned full coverage pajamas, and a house coat. She said no one in her family was going to have to be outside where people would see their night clothes if the house burned down. When she found out I was sleeping in my underwear, I got a 20-minute lecture on acting like a prostitute. This was in 1982. This was back in high school. My friend's older brother had slippers made from his beloved dead dog's hide with the fur still attached. I thought she was joking at first, but she was perfectly serious, and I realized that's exactly what they looked like. They were definitely not fake fur slippers. In grade 6, age 11 or 12, I went for a sleepover at my new friend's house. He and his family had just immigrated to Western Canada from Manchester or Bolton, England. They were what you might call working class. As soon as I got there, his toothy mother comes into his room with a pen and notepad and casually asks us what would we have from the liquor store. We must have ordered about $50 worth of alcohol between us. That night, we just got absolutely trashed on rum and cokes playing Super Nintendo in his basement like it was completely normal. I remember jumping on the trampoline at probably 2 or 3 in the morning while his father barbecued sausages for us to eat. His parents otherwise sat in their living room smoking and watching TV all night without a care in the world for the stumbling preteens downstairs. At regular intervals, his mother would come down with snacks and treats as we damn near stayed up till dawn laughing and horsing around and having the time of our lives. At a friend's house when I was younger, went to use the restroom. Four women in the house. All of them were in the habit of leaving their bloody ladies' products lying messy side up in the lidless garbage can. Growing up with a mom and two sisters, we all got through Shark Week as discreetly and invisibly as possible. I had never considered that other women didn't worry as much about hiding bloody pads or tampons from visitors. At one point, butter that was stored outside of the refrigerator. I have since learned that this is perfectly okay, but growing up in a family that strictly kept the butter in the fridge had me believing there was no other way. Now I know. Couple of things. At one house, a microwave on top of a toilet. You couldn't enter the kitchen due to the amount of hoarding, so if they were hungry, they would plug the microwave in, place it on the toilet, and microwave some food. At another house, lots and lots of empty boxes, stacked in every corner of the house in case they ever had to return items. I can somewhat understand that mentality, but when you've used that item for years, return policies don't apply anymore. When I was younger, my parents signed me up for a bunch of theater programs. I'm not sure if any of you have ever been into theater, but it really brings together an aberrant bunch of people. Anyway, I made friends with this normal seeming girl named Madeline. She was cute as a button and read a lot of books and was into art, so we got along swimmingly. We hang out a lot at my house and in public places like movie theaters and such, and one day I ask her if we can spend the evening at hers. She says yes, but cautions me that her family is a bit weird. I chalk this up as a typical preteen social anxiety and normal family insecurities that everyone that age has, and I assure her that I'm sure it will be fine. So sometime a few days later, she invites me over for dinner. Everything is normal from the time I step out of my dad's car to the time her father opens the door to their home. Their very, very unfinished home. And I don't mean in the process of moving unfinished. I mean that everything was very neat, tidy, and even decorative, but the house itself was unfinished. I mean pictures were hanging on the walls, but some of the walls didn't have plaster or paint or anything. They were just boards like a foundation where walls should have been, as if the construction had been halted halfway through the completion of the home, but the residents moved in and got settled anyway. There were no doors on any of the rooms, not even the bathroom, and my friend's bedroom only had completed walls on the side of her room that separated it from the exterior of the house. I asked her what the deal with it all was, and she said, yeah, it's been like this for the past 10 years. My parents took over the building process because of some disagreement with the contractors, and then they just sort of didn't finish. We don't really mind, though. 
None of us need privacy or anything. We're a close family. Even her parents seem entirely unperturbed by the lack of bathroom privacy and no problems relieving themselves with me in the next room. It was weird. My buddy's dad had a thing about paying for water. So if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down didn't even work for him. The bathrooms were terrible. They wouldn't flush at all unless his dad made them flush. I hated going there. I had a friend a while back who had her boyfriend living with her and her mom. Rather than get up to go to the bathroom to pee in the middle of the night, he would pee in a soda or beer bottles and just put them on a built-in shelf above the bed. They would then just sit there until the shelf filled. She was just okay with it. I probably also lived in a weird household. Friends said it was, anyway. I was raised by my dad and my grandma, and my grandma had some very strange ideas of what a normal house was. All shoes had to be kept on a bookshelf by the back door, and my dresser was in the kitchen, despite me having a perfectly fine bedroom. I slept on a straw coat in a room with my sister, who had a normal queen-size bed. On holidays, I was expected to recite something by rote. My grandma also made sure we learned to type on her incredibly old typewriter, and that my sister and I both knew how to sew by hand. She was an awesome lady. I miss her. She grew up in an abandoned church because her family was ostracized by her small community. Her dad and uncles had been bank robbers during the Depression and killed, and were killed, by police officers. So they were pretty much hated for a fair number of years. I went to someone's house, at age 19 approximately, and while there, her mother screamed at her, and she screamed back. This shocked me as growing up, my mother never raised her voice, and my father rarely did. And if they did raise their voice, then it was very serious. We shut up. We didn't answer back. We felt bad for doing something wrong. I went to my friend's house when I was about 11 or so and went to use the bathroom. Hanging over the toilet was a nude photo of her parents with black handprints on their private parts. I guess it was supposed to be artsy. Either way, I thought it was a pretty weird thing to hang in the main bathroom of their house, the one they tell guests to use. They lived in a huge house and had one room dedicated to Christmas called the Christmas Room. It had a massive fake tree, unopened gifts, garland and lights, and the creepy factor, Christmas music playing year round. Growing up, I was at my friend Corey's house all the time. Every Friday, her family would order pizza. They would leave the leftovers on the counter, in the box, all weekend, and would just snack from the box. No refrigeration. Seems strange then and now. People who keep their Christmas decorations, including the tree, up all year round, or much longer than the Christmas season, like starting in October and not taking them down until several weeks after the New Year. We also had neighbors who replaced all their floors, even upstairs, with tile because their dogs peed everywhere and they were tired of replacing the carpeting every other year. Why they couldn't house train the dogs or get rid of them, I have no idea. I visited family and they showed me around. Apparently my niece does her makeup sitting on the floor with a mirror hanging low on the wall. She wipes the mascara brush clean on the carpet. There are black streaks everywhere on the carpet around the area she sits when doing this. Blew my mind. Back in high school, I went over to a friend's house for the first time. Her parents were considered very well off for a small town we lived in. So I was excited to see what the inside of the house looked like. In the living room, they had this big cabinet filled with glassware. I was admiring how pretty they were when my friend pointed out that they were urns. Dozens of urns filled with ashes. I was completely freaked out. Who knows that many people that have died? I spent the rest of the evening convinced the house was haunted and what weird diseases would I get for being in the same house with all those ashes. Freaked me out for weeks. Fast forward a decade later and I find the friend on Facebook and happen to bring up the urns and turns out my friend now has them in her care. Found out when we were in high school one of the businesses her parents ran took on jobs cleaning out homes after people were evicted, died, arrested, etc. They occasionally came across the urns and didn't have the heart to just throw them out so kept them all out of respect for the dead. Creeped me out as a kid but now it's kind of sweet. My old boss invited people over for drinks one day and proudly showed off his new coffee table. It was a glass table supported by a naked crouching woman carved out of wood. It was about the tackiest thing I had ever seen and I had to bite my knuckle to keep from laughing. He was so proud of it though. I was looking at a house. It had an unfinished basement. Went down to check it out. Room was probably an 18 by 20. Washer and dryer against the wall by the furnace. Cement floor, where there would normally be a drain in the floor, sat a toilet. 
all by itself, with a roll of toilet paper sitting on the floor beside it. Biggest bathroom ever. Not me personally, but a guy I know, my brother, is a plumber and he got called to a house. He's always telling me stories about toilets overflowing with poop. This one couple had a toilet overflow with so much waste that it flooded out into the kitchen. Their child had been playing in the waste that day and was covered in it. When he asked them about the kid, he swears they responded with, She will be fine. It's organic and it will help her immune system. He says the smell was shocking. I slept over at a friend's house once. Like many sleepovers, there was no sleeping, but this wasn't for a fun reason. My friend had warned me that they had cockroaches, but never specified how bad. I figured it would be a couple scurrying out when the lights were off and that would be it. No, wall to wall crawling cockroaches, like had to shake off the mat I was supposed to sleep on cockroaches. Her dad told me about how they oiled the inside of their leftover pop bottles and left bits of food at the bottom to lure them in so they could kill them with hot water and flush them. He then kindly offered me some cotton for my nose and ears so that they didn't crawl in while I was asleep. I convinced my friend we should stay up all night watching movies and then wait and see the sunrise outside.